this subsection, we will be demonstrating how to jointly analyze event and aggregate data. The overall objective of this session is to demonstrate how routine analysis apps, the data visualizer and the maps apps, can be used to view event and aggregate data jointly. By the end of this subsection, you will understand the concept of program indicators and how these can be viewed in routine analysis apps. You will understand the concept of combined indicators and how these can also be viewed in routine analysis apps. And finally, you will be able to demonstrate how to jointly create event and aggregate data outputs in pivot tables, charts, and maps. We will start by covering the concept of program indicators and combined indicators. These indicators provide a way to produce calculated values based on data elements from tracker and event programs. For example, we could generate a count of the number of events in the malaria case management program where the gender is female. You would have already seen a version of this when you created pivot table style reports giving counts from event data in the Event Reports app. Program indicators, however, can be used in the Data Visualizer and the Maps applications, not just within Event Reports and the Event Visualizer. These therefore become important depending on the type of outputs you need to produce. The other type of indicator in DHIS2 is simply called indicators. You should be familiar with the concept of an indicator from the DHIS2 Fundamentals course, or perhaps you have personally dealt with them in a DHIS2 system. We will be specifically discussing combined indicators in this session, however, which may be a new concept to you. Combined indicators have formulas that can consist of data from both event or tracker programs, as well as aggregate data sets. As an example, we could calculate the malaria incidence per 100,000 population. In order to do this, we could get a count of the number of malaria cases from our event program as our numerator, and divide this by the population taken from an aggregate data set as our denominator. Then multiply this by 100,000 to obtain this value. In this example, we are taking data from both the Malaria Case Management Event Program and a population aggregate data set in order to calculate our indicator. We will show this in practice during the demonstration. There are four main tasks in this demonstration. The first is to demonstrate the analysis of program indicators from the SARA RCH program in a pivot table. We will look at the number of facilities offering antenatal care services and the number of facilities offering family planning services in 2020 at a district level. The second task is to demonstrate the analysis of program indicators in a graph from the Malaria Case Management Program. In this task, we will view the number of male malaria cases, number of female malaria cases, and total number of malaria cases in a line graph over time. We will view these data at an organization unit of training land and a monthly period of July to December of 2019. The third task is to use a pivot table to view a combination of aggregate data, program indicators, 
and combined indicators. Here, we will show the number of malaria cases with the total population and a combined indicator of malaria incidents per 10,000 population at the district level in training land. We will view these data using a period of 2019. Following on from the third task, the fourth and final task is to use the MAPS app to view the data in the third task geospatially. In this example, we will compare the raw number of malaria cases with the incidence of malaria cases per 10,000 people in different districts. We will view these data for all districts in training land and for a six monthly period of July to December of 2019.